What is Bitcoin? <laughs> who? Satoshi who? It's a romantic story. The blockchain as a technology is not something that needs regulation. Hey guys, this is Catherine Ross from Cointelegraph. We're here in Berlin with Jimmy Wales. Hi Jimmy, it is Hello. a pleasure to meet you. So first of all, how's it going on Block Show? Great, yeah, I just, uh, I just came off stage. Uh, yeah. and I came and I, I spoke about uh, Wikipedia a little bit and uh, about decentralized systems, about how I see the current uh, landscape of, of crypto and but mainly I talked about my new project Wiki Tribune which is all about bringing high quality neutral journalism uh, to the world. So you've mentioned, I have to ask, I'm sorry, you've mentioned mm -hmm. that crypto is a bubble and you've actually expressed this kind of point of view in different interviews. So do you really think it's a bubble industry or it, it, there is something that we can take out of it. Well, I, I, I'm old now, and <laughs> I was uh, in the internet world uh, during the dot-com bubble. bubble yeah. uh, and so when I say something's a bubble, it doesn't mean that I think there's nothing of value there. It means there's a lot of noise, and there's a lot of uh, investment money flowing in. A lot of things are being invested in that don't actually make sense. Uh, a lot of projects are going to fail. and But we additionally have a lot of scams, a lot of... Um, you know, uh, theft. Uh, a lot of a lot of crazy things are happening, oh, yeah. uh, and so I just ask people to be careful. Well, that that's fair. So, um, are you a crypto investor yourself? No, I'm not. I I have had uh, some crypto here and there, mm -hmm. uh, but it's I'm not an investor at all. So that's the other thing to know about me. I uh, I have my own projects, um, and beyond that, I don't really invest. You've mentioned on stage that uh, Vicky Tribune, the project, right? So you will, you may accept or will be accepting cryptocurrency as payment, right? Yes. But if you ever decide to launch a project, blockchain-based project, what kind of project would that be? Would it be charity, journalism? So what would this um, project be about? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not planning to do anything uh, sort of directly uh, in the blockchain space. Uh, I am very intrigued uh, by the idea, and a lot of people have pitched me on ideas uh, sure. in the journalism space and uh, I just don't see a lot that makes a lot of sense uh, and so I'll continue to reflect and think uh, you know some of the people I've talked to uh, pitch me some idea and then I start to poke some holes in it and say this is this is the problem they say yeah but with your name you could raise so much money and I'm like yeah that's I, I don't need that at this stage in my career I'm not just trying to get money from people from something I don't personally believe in so until I figure it out uh, not going to be doing anything. I get it. So there is an opportunity, but the project has to be of value. It has to. It has to resonate. It has to be something that's meaningful to me. I, I'm sure. I'm sure you've heard about the Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal. Of course. So the issue of privacy is is really a topical here. Uh, what do you, do you think that any cryptocurrency or the blockchain technology can somehow help with this issue? Um, I don't know, but I, I suspect not. Um, I think that the issue is much broader uh, and that um, you know, a lot of the ideas in this area kind of fail to understand the real, the real risk points um, and, and solve problems that people don't actually have. Um, you know, I think that um, the biggest thing that's happening is that consumers are beginning to wake up to the idea that sharing all of your data um, has consequences that you might not have thought about. So there are good consequences. So one of the good consequences is advertising is more relevant. And I think consumers appreciate that. I mean, I like the fact that I get ads for things that actually I'm interested in. There's nothing like wrong boats. with that. Like boats, <laughs> for example. Boats. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I get ads for boats because I like boats and I'm interested in boats and I might buy a boat and so on. And it's a perfectly sensible thing. Um, on the other hand, uh, if political actors are using this to create disruption and hatred and uh, basically uh, sowing divisions in society for political gain, uh, that's super problematic and it's something that I think people should be concerned about. I'm also concerned about uh, you know, the incredible pressure that's been put on the industry of journalism uh, for quite some time. Uh, that's been a, a big problem, uh, you know, the number of excellent journalists who are out of a job uh, simply because the world has shifted in a way that's not good for journalism is a problem and I think we need to work ways through that, uh, find new ways of supporting journalism. 
Speaking of journalism, have you heard about the social media ban uh, on cryptocurrency advertising and the Google ban? On uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. So basically it means that our post online, we have, well, like Cointelegraph, we have Facebook groups and Twitter groups, and we cannot simply uh, post anything about right. it. So that kind of violates the First Amendment right in a way, and we were trying to do something about it. Do you think it's fair? Is it a fair... Uh, Situation when we can find ourselves that mm. we cannot speak what we would like to speak about. We would like to inform, but we cannot do this due to this ban. So it, it's really complicated. So the first thing I'll say is it certainly doesn't violate the First Amendment. Uh, the First Amendment is a restriction on Congress. <laughs> Uh, and so private platforms are not bound by the First Amendment. Um, in terms of the fairness, I mean, I think, I think the issue right now is that uh, there have been uh, quite clearly scams put forward uh, that are not just technical violations of some securities rules, but actual scams where people have, have had their money taken. And that's a huge problem. And so for platforms like uh, Facebook and Google, they have to be sensitive to that. Uh, now, have they reacted? Have they overreacted? Possibly. Uh, it's a very complicated thing. Um, and, and certainly, uh, it's something that I think, uh, you know, n needs to be seriously looked at by by all the relevant parties, relevant players. Um, but, you know, if, if people are advertising uh, securities for sale uh, that are um, in violation of the securities laws. Uh, that's a real problem, and I don't blame the, I don't, I don't blame these uh, people for saying we don't want any part of that. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I guess the industry saw a, a crypto, the so-called crypto craze in 2017. Uh, did something happen with the Wikipedia search in terms of the crypto uh, results or any activities? Did it increase? So, so um, yeah, I'm sure. I haven't actually looked yeah. at that data, but I mean, what we see at Wikipedia is that the search query, uh, the search volumes for everything mm -hmm. does tend to follow the news cycle. Uh, and so things that uh, suddenly become very interesting uh, because they're in the news all the time, we'll see a lot more searches at Wikipedia. Um, because, you know, Wikipedia, you know, it, if you simply read in the mainstream media about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, it's going to be very rare to get any kind of an in-depth explanation of how it works and what it is. And Wikipedia is actually a pretty good place to go for that kind of broad background information yeah. to say, what is Bitcoin? Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> who, Satoshi who? Like, what is that all about, you know? Uh, and, uh, you know, that, even the story of who is Satoshi, right, is... It's a romantic story. It's gotten a lot of huge amount of press. It's okay. very intriguing. Uh, and so a lot of people, the, the article on Satoshi Nakamoto, which will be a good summary of that whole story and, and what is known, uh, will have been read by, I'm sure, millions of people by now. So. OK. Um, so you you're yourself. Are you? Will we be seeing you a lot at cryptocurrency conferences? What do you think? Um, don't know. Maybe if they invite <laughs> me. Uh, you know. I, I mean, one of the things that is interesting uh, that I feel like I bring to the table is I'm I'm neither an irrational critic mm -hmm. nor a compromised booster who's just trying to talk my own portfolio yeah. or something like that. I'm 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 quite. You know, what Wikipedia reflects my personality, which is I'm just very fact-based and I'm interested in the world. And, uh, and so I think I bring some observations from experience and history of living through the dot-com bubble, the dot-com crash, to say, look, I see a lot of parallels here and there's some interesting things to think about. Uh, and I'm super interested in the technology. So, yeah, we'll, speaking, we'll see. Speaking about regulations a bit, I have to ask, I'm sorry, you have mm -hmm. a PhD in finance, if I'm not mistaken. I did all the coursework for PhD, okay. but I never finished the oh, dissertation. Okay. So, <laughs> Was uh, it on purpose or you just got bored? I just couldn't take it anymore. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay I, can, I can understand that. <laughs> so um, there are a lot of talks about how to regulate or not to regulate mm. the cryptocurrency. So do you see a cryptocurrency as a commodity or utility? So this is what we've been talking a lot about. Yeah. How do you see it? Well, I mean, I, I think there are many, many different aspects. So there's blockchain as a technology. Uh, and so blockchain as a technology is not something that needs regulation or that it even makes. It's sort of like you'll occasionally hear a politician saying, oh, we need to ban cryptography. And it's like, well, that's stupid and crazy and yeah. you're never going to do it. It's math. You can't ban math. You can't ban blockchain. It's math. So that's that. At the same time, we see a lot of things going on that um, it's very difficult to say they're anything other than just scams, people making off of millions of 
dollars of other people's money uh, with with no accountability, uh, and so that hard. that deserves law enforcement investigation. Uh, we see a lot of the, the hacks and, and Bitcoin or other coins being stolen uh, because somebody you know hacked a server and, and got the keys. Bullets, yeah. uh, that's that that's what the police are for, right? Ideally, uh, and I actually I feel like there's been a far too little response. Um, you know, if you if you walked into Citibank and walked out with fifty six million dollars worth of gold, not your money. <laughs> yeah, not yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but you you, yeah. you went in and you and you and you somebody else. You yeah. picked the lock and you stole the actual gold out the back in a truck. The, there would be an army of FBI agents investigating this, and I feel like a lot of the cryptocurrency thefts have gone kind of like the police are just like, well, we don't know what to do, so they do very little. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not to criticize them, but it's just a fact that we're, yeah. we're not seeing the right kind of law enforcement response. That People don't think of that as regulation, but of course, it's against the law to steal things, and so <laughs> it yeah, is regulation. It is. Um, and I also think that for the consumers and for the brand image of the whole cryptocurrency space, there is a feeling that Gee, I, it's very speculative. I might invest a hundred dollars and make ten thousand, or I might just get my money stolen, and that's not that's not a, a good start for a revolution and the way that we transact. Uh, and so I think that we should welcome uh, the rule of law. Uh, I would even say the rule of law is is the first step. Never mind regulation. And of course, we run the risk, uh, as we always do in technology, that uh, legislators who have almost no understanding of what's going on uh, will pass regulations that don't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, and we've had that in the internet space forever. Uh, we have it, in my opinion now, with GDPR, which I think is a is bonkers. And yeah. it's an attempt to solve a problem, but it's not going to solve the problem. And it's just adds just burdens. Just action in to do something, but it's not. Yeah, exactly. And, and what I've said about GDPR, I'm, actually, I'm not the, the person who originally said this, but uh, I've seen people saying, you know, if you were going to design a regulation uh, that is intended to entrench Facebook and Google in their uh, privileged positions, you could hardly do better than GDPR because it's really burdensome for startups and it's not much burden for them. I mean, it is burden for them, but small price to pay to maintain a monopoly. So, uh, so anyway, I think that those are the kinds of things that we should be worried about. And governments themselves, do you think they should embrace cryptocurrencies and or blockchain technology? Can they benefit from it? Um, I, it depends, right? Uh, sure. I, I would say <laughs> there are a lot of interesting potential applications. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that right now one of the things that's going on is that a lot of vendors are hawking products that don't work, mm -hmm. that are vaporware, and governments can, just like any other buyer, mm -hmm. be duped. Uh, and so they need to be very cautious and very careful. I think particularly when you're dealing with taxpayer money, um, there is a very good reason to be extremely cautious uh, about new technologies. Mm -hmm. yep. Not to reject it entirely, but you know, the first person who comes by and, and sells you, you know, uh, we're gonna put you know, all of your health records on the blockchain. Really, what does that mean exactly, oh, yeah. right? How exactly is that going to help? What does that entail? Uh, because you could pay millions for consultants yeah. to come and do something that doesn't actually work. That doesn't mean that we won't necessarily move in that direction, but I just I, I want to see governments moving very cautiously in this space. Okay. Uh, so this is it from me. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for coming. It's, it was a great pleasure. Great. Okay. Lovely. Thank, thank you. you. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.